Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose, and in this video we're going to talk about MP3s and FLAC, and really, not just those, all the different encoding formats that are used both for stereo and surround sound that are lossy versus lossless. Can you hear a difference between them? So if you go to any of the companies that have actually done research into this, what they'll tell you is that at the right bit rate, the lossy compression is indistinguishable from the lossless. That's what they're going to tell you. What I found, though, is that there's academics who have fallen on both sides of this. Some academics have found that it makes no difference, and you can, as long as you're at a high enough rate, people can't hear it. And then there's other academics who have found that there is a difference, and you can, and that you still need to stick with this lossless uh, encoding, all else being equal. Um, the, the companies that develop them will always tell you that their magic codec is indistinguishable, because of course they do. And then there's your own experiences, right? So I'll just say probably there's less difference than we'd like to admit. But even I have found that lossless streaming, for instance, sounds substantially better than lossy streaming. Even with now, maybe maybe Tidal, for instance, when you change the quality level, is actually doing something else to it. But I just, I remember as an example, uh, a while back, I was listening to uh, Paradise City. And I was playing it pretty loudly and I was playing it on Amazon. And I believe Amazon had just recently released their version of the streaming service that was lossless and you could go back and forth between the two. So before I upgraded to the lossless one, I listened to the song on, in a lossy format. And then I switched over to lossless and all of a sudden it was like, you know, like the classic avail was lifted. <laughs> Most notably, it was much more dynamic. So it just sounded more impactful. It sounded more real. There was greater dynamic range. It wasn't a loudness thing. I kept actually trying to see to make sure it was exactly the same version, and it definitely was. Um, I actually had done something for Audioholics. I did a video where I went and took all the streaming services, and I loaded them onto my computer. Um, so a little app you put on your desktop. And then I fit, you can choose the output that it goes to. And I got this thing that was like a digital patch cable system. It makes it so that you can take that and feed it to something else instead of speakers. So it's kind of like a digital sound card. And I took that and I took the output of the different formats and I, and I fed it into Audacity so I could record it. Not to steal it or anything. I didn't even save the recordings after this. Just to analyze them. To see if I could see a difference between them. And then I showed you guys the analysis of it. So I looked at the loudness levels, the dynamic range, the bandwidth, the spectral balance, etc. And I did it at all the different sampling rates all the way down into the compressed formats. And there were huge differences in the high frequencies, which shouldn't shock you, but they were so high in frequency that probably most of us couldn't hear that much. What was more interesting was the differences in dynamic range. And sometimes the differences were non-existent, and it wouldn't shock me if the actual core base material that was used before it got sent out for streaming was itself put in MP3. There's probably artists out there who record in their own homes in a lossy format to begin with, and then all the information is lost forever at that point. Um, and then there was other content I was listening to, most of it really, where there were sizable differences between the different format types. Um, you know, at least one or two, if not more dB of, of extra dynamic range as you got into a lossy codec versus, I'm sorry, a lossless codec versus a lossy codec from the same streaming service. Uh, the bigger differences typically were between versions of recordings. And the other thing I found, which is unrelated to this issue, was that as recordings have gotten newer, they've become louder. Shouldn't shock you, that's what the Loudness Wars concept was all about. But one of the weird things about louder is louder means less dynamic range, but a lot of people think louder sounds better. It's why they do it. Uh, many of you, if you were to listen to a wider dynamic range recording, would think it sounds too quiet and wouldn't realize what you need to do is turn it way up. And then you'd be upset about the really wide dynamic range because it keeps getting so loud on you. And so everybody just got used to and actually seemed to prefer louder recordings with way less dynamic range. So I, I like Michael Jackson. Sue me if you don't like that. Um, Michael Jackson original recordings are much higher dynamic range and less loud than Michael Jackson remasters. But he, because he's so popular there were so many remasters that you could listen to like four or five different versions of the exact same song. And every time they remastered, it got louder. Um, so that was interesting and kind of affected my ability to, to hear differences. But 
forgetting what research says, I'll just tell you my own experience has been that the lossy codex don't sound as good as the lossless codex. In surround sound, you kind of have a similar issue. So Dolby has Dolby Digital Plus, which is a lossy codec for Dolby Atmos encoding. It was originally used for something else, but now it's used for Dolby Atmos encoding. And then you have Dolby True HD, which is a lossless codec, kind of like FLAC, but for Dolby Atmos encoding. And again, was originally just used for Dolby True HD surround. And Dolby True HD based Dolby Atmos is only available on Kaleidoscape and Discs. If I'm wrong about that, say something in the comments, but I don't believe there's any streaming services that actually use that. Um, and I believe they don't because the, the uh, space it takes up is much higher. And then you've got Dolby Digital Plus, which is what's used as the encoding format, it's a lossy format for streaming services and maybe some discs too, I'm not sure. Um, in any case, Dolby True HD on discs and on Kaleidoscape sounds way better than Dolby Digital Plus on streaming. However, having said all that, streaming services are very likely doing something downstream from the, you know, when they get their stem off of the hero. I think they're probably doing something to make it even worse yet. So it's possible that in its best quality, Dolby Digital Plus Atmos encoded recording sounds closer to Dolby True HD than one would realize based on streaming because the sound on streaming pretty much sucks. <laughs> I mean, it's anybody who I've heard some people try to argue that the streaming stuff has gotten so good. It's indistinguishable. I don't know what they're listening to or watching, but that is not true. None of the streaming. it's getting better every year and that's great, but it's not even in the ballpark of what you can get from discs or Kaleidoscape. And it's really too bad. Um, there are things coming that could change that in the future that would make encoding more efficient, but the lossy codecs right now for audio still seem to be imparting some problems and then all the other stuff they're doing to screw up the sound, um, including, I think, really low audio bit rates, potentially. So anyway, this is a short one. I just wanted to say, I think that the lossless codecs sound better than the lossy codecs. I think it is noticeable. I've done lots of listening tests. I've even done ABX testing. You can get apps that let you do that and you can go between them. And while I haven't necessarily been 100% on all of them, when I made sure that the recordings I was using actually had a difference between the lossy version and the lossless version, meaning I, that the, the base material. So what I would do is actually take something in a lossless version, like a WAV file or something like that, and I would check to make sure it actually is fully using the capabilities of that format. It wasn't compressed to begin with. And then I export it in a like an MP3 format maybe two different versions, maybe one's 325 kilobits a second, the other's like 128, something like that. And then I throw it into the ABX software and I do it. In those scenarios, I was able to detect differences uh, on always. I, there was, I mean, again, I didn't always get 100%, but I always did better than chance. And so that, you know, like I said before in another video, I don't think cables make a difference because that's my testing has not shown that to be true. Well, in this case, I did this testing and it, it did show it to be true. And I've always wondered why the companies that develop these codecs would say that they did all this research that showed that at least at the right bit rate, it doesn't make a difference because it wasn't that hard to show that wasn't true on my end. All I can think of is it was in their interest to do that. And so that's how they structured the study. I don't know. Anyway, hopefully this video was helpful and interesting. Uh, keep on watching. We got more coming. Thanks.